Minus both Stephen Curry and Draymond Green, the Golden State Warriors beat the second-seeded Houston Rockets at Chase Center on Thursday night. Snapping a five-game losing streak, Jonathan Kaminga scored a career-high 33 points and was incredibly clutch when it mattered most. Andrew Wiggins maintained his role as second option as he added 22, but no other Warriors scored in double figures other than Jonathan and Andrew. Along with Kaminga and Wiggins, it was the Warriors' defense which won them the game, as in what was the best win of the season for the Dubs so far, they held the Rockets to just 93 points on 37.6% shooting from the field and 26.3% shooting from three-point range. At just 6-4, Brandon Pajemski recorded a game-most and career-high 12 rebounds. As for the man of the hour, Kaminga, the man came through under pressure by recording 14 of the Warriors' 26 points in the fourth quarter. One of the primary keys to the Warriors staying afloat and achieving anything this season is the development of NBA champion Jonathan Kaminga. And boy, did JK look developed on Thursday night. His jump shot looked as fluidly smooth as it could possibly be, as Jonathan was confidently stepping into jumpers whether they were pull-ups or spot-ups, and this was due to his unhesitant decisiveness in either getting to his spot or releasing it on the catch. When defenders went under the screen like Van Vliet does right here, Jonathan read the coverage astutely and didn't waste any time, having preemptively picked his weapon of choice. Kaminga's shot falling allowed for him to slither his way inside for buckets. He was scoring inside off takes to the basket off the bounce, cuts to the rim off the ball, putbacks, and transition opportunities. But with the score at 96-93 Warriors with 20 seconds left, his clutchest basket came after getting switched on to Van Vliet, attacking to his left, and splitting the double team of Van Vliet and Brooks, and getting back to his right to complete a monster take to the basket. This had Stefan and Draymond going insane from the pine, as Curry and Green were talking to JK all game. Here was Jonathan on that. They, they wanted me to go get the ball. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that's how I got my confidence. Uh, they wanted me to go out there and just get the ball. And, and just go from there, you know. They trusted me. Uh, and, you know, that kind of boosted me. That kind of helped, helped me to just be confident. Um, I took a deep breath and I just went out there and just say, took care of the ball. Given how well Jonathan showed he can play next to Wiggins, who was also acquired in the trade from Minnesota for D'Angelo Russell in 2020, hell of a trade, JK may have re-earned his position in the starting five which could be a major development in the Warriors' season. That's especially the case if Kaminga carries over his play from Thursday into the rest of the season, which quite frankly the Warriors need him to. With how athletic and talented he is, Kaminga's presence on both ends of the floor is vital to this Warriors team. Without Melton, they need a wing that can lock up the perimeter, and offensively, they need that 2A, 2B slash third scoring option they can consistently look to. On that note, another key to the Warriors' 24-25 campaign is Andrew Wiggins, who, like Jonathan, was stellar. It was Wiggins who carried the Warriors' scoring load early on, as he had two and one triples in the first half. Here, he used a screen from Jackson Davis and got hit on the arm by Dylan Brooks while knocking down the triple, and on this play, he used a screen from Looney to get switched onto Jabari Smith Jr., who racked him, causing him to fall down. That last play was dangerous, given as Steve Kerr admitted, Wiggs probably shouldn't have been playing in the first place due to an ankle injury. Andrew also spoke on his injury. Steve said you probably wouldn't have played tonight if, you know, maybe Steph and Draymond weren't out just because of the ankle. How much is that bothering you right now? Um, it was, it was definitely bothering me um, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the training staff worked on it, uh, made it feel better. You know, definitely playing well, so just fought through it. How lingering is this uh, ankle thing? Um, I feel like it's it's going in the right direction. So, did did you do it during a game or did it just? Mm, I don't know. Okay. okay. Would you have played? Do you think you would have played tonight if uh, Steph and Draymond were available, or did you just feel kind of an added burden to you know be out there? Um, I'm not too sure now that you know the game is done, but I think I would have played. 
just because I feel like you know the training staff got me right, you know, before the game and had a good pregame shoot. So Riggs was phenomenal. I don't even know if he should have played tonight. He had the, the uh, ankle, but you know he knew Steph and uh, Whit and uh, Draymond were out, and uh, he knew how important this game was, and he he gutted it out. He's uh, he's been that way since he's been here, you know. Um, Iron Man, um, you know, I think the first seven years of his career, he might have missed, you know, 15 games. Um, so we know we can count on him night after night uh, to be there for us. And uh, he, he knew he had a lot of responsibility tonight with, uh, with Steph and Dre out. And he, he, and, he and JK really uh, both did a great job of providing the offense. The Warriors are now preparing to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and they should have Curry and Green back in the lineup for this matchup. The Warriors have now beaten the Rockets in 15 consecutive matchups, which should give them a ton of confidence heading into next Wednesday's matchup with the Rockets, which will be the NBA Cup quarterfinals. That game will be in Houston. The last time the Rockets beat the Warriors, Russ and Harden were on the Rockets, Marquise Chris started for Golden State, Jokic hadn't won an MVP yet, and the bubble hadn't happened yet. How this win for Golden State went against the incredibly tough to deal with young Rockets is exactly how the non-Curry minutes have to be when Stefan is active. First of all, having either Curry or Wiggins on the floor at all times may be something Kerr will want to adapt. Secondly, and more importantly, you need pods playing smart at the point of attack, as well as efficient. You need Kaminga, Moody, or both to be creating their own offense by either getting to the rim or pulling up. Slow-mo Kyle Anderson has got to be receiving sufficient minutes and of course producing with his unique skill set. Gary Payton II's rim protection, perimeter defense, and on the other side finishing around the basket all have to be there. Buddy Heald has to be making his open looks and taking smart shots. Whether it's Kevon Looney or Trace Jackson Davis out there without Steph, it's crucial those two are making their layups, providing swift switch defense and rotations on the back side, and setting hard screens. With all or even most of these factors in check, the Warriors can develop a mindset where they feel comfortable without the gravity drawing and ability to bail you out offensively of Stephen Curry on the floor. That's why the Warriors winning without not only their best player in Stefan, but their second best player in Draymond Green was so huge. Additionally, after losing five in a row with a bunch of losses that came right down to the wire amidst that streak, it showed a lot of heart from the rest of the Warriors minus Curry and Green to have pulled out a close victory. Beating a top team without their two best players displayed that the Warriors' depth still has life, even minus DeAnthony Melton whose season was ended due to ACL surgery. Was the win against Houston the biggest of the year for Golden State? Let me know down below. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.